Trainee's not here, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. It's 5.32, meeting of the Energy Committee with the Select Board as a working meeting to uh, make some plans for town policy work going forward on this topic. Um, I think we need to start by having a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Sounds like Pat got to it. Yeah, I got, I got Pat a half a little bit before you there, Tom. Yeah, that's all right. And then I, I believe we would move on to public comment, which would be about items that are not on the agenda. Not really expecting much for that. And then we can move into our, our meeting. Am I missing anything, Trevor? You got it. You walked us into it. We're, we'll stay at our open meeting law jail for the moment. All right. So one of the things that um, I think the Energy Advisory Committee has done is there is a little presentation prepared, um, a little four slide thing. Two of the slides have some of the projects they've been working on on it. So if the board's okay with that, we can do a little screen share. And it looks like everybody who's listed on that is somewhere either in the room or on Zoom. You're okay to start that way or we can dig in any other way, but that's, that's what's been no. sort of set up for you. That, that, that sounds great unless there's some objection. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Tim's gonna do a screen share here and Okay, this will take like three minutes. Hang on a second, everybody's got that right on their screen? Just to mm -hmm. make sure this is clear. Okay, sorry about that, thank you. So uh, I got an introduction and some opening <clears throat> remarks. Uh, the active members of the Energy Committee are uh, Susan Mills, who had been on the Energy Committee for a decade like I have. And we've managed to work with our two young members, Jeff Grout and Mary Zavez, on five projects in the last 15 months, including one during the worst of COVID-19. And we uh, have uh, the advice, welcome advice of Pat Brent to direct us. Uh, the Energy Committee works on most projects with the R3 Energy Task Force, which came out of Randolph winning uh, the third climate model community in the state of Vermont. So we had the opportunity uh, to work with John Copans for a year. And out of that effort came the hotel possibility, the hiring of Josh Jerome. Sam Hooper's glove shop was being heated by coal. Now it's a net zero building with solar panels on it. Um, and as you correctly identified, we are an advisory committee, but we're known for being the econ our energy, econ our, uh, energy committee. Um, and we request that the select board, the chair and Trevor work with us. The last time that <clears throat> the select board called in the energy committee was five years ago when Larry Richford ran the Energy Committee. And we had Pete Thonin, uh, he, who was the expert uh, at that time. So we really, really want to work with you. We have a lot of strengths within our, with the Energy Committee. And uh, we're here tonight to start that process going. Um, we're also, as you well know, we're here as a result of, of coming to the select board in, uh, at the last meeting. And if there's nothing else that I can 
communicate at this point in time the importance of the legislator in 2021, 20, I got that one wrong, I didn't fix it, Susan, mm -hmm. 20, uh, passing the Global Solution Act, uh, requiring an action plan by December 1. And I've gone to a significant number of meetings and it's the best run uh, of planning process. They have five subcommittees working it. They get excellent advice from the Energy Action Network, VPERT, and so on. And it's the future. If we're going to deal with global warming significantly, it's going to come out of that activity. You're at three minutes here, just so you know. Um, so, what does the select board want communicated? Tonight, I know from Larry because he put it out <clears throat> um, on 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 the network recently that he wanted to learn how we can be more uh, save money on energy and get on the track of get off the track of fossil fuels and more uh, electric vehicles. So, at this point in time, I'm going to. Turn it over to Mary Ann Savitz. Okay, so um, so the next slide is is a projects list, and this is really just a brainstorming list. And what we're hoping to to get from the select board tonight is feedback on these ideas. Now, some of these projects are projects that have been worked on, and they'll be continued. Um, We'll continue to work on those. Some of them are new ideas. And so we'd love to have your feedback. And we also, um, we'll, we're also wondering if there are other town committees that might be working on these projects, what, you know, the best way to coordinate with other committees if they, if they are working on similar projects. Um, and thinking about funding and how we co coordinate with the town um, in terms of funding and that sort of thing. So if you look at them, um, they're basically in, uh, under two categories. And the first is reducing fossil fuel use in the is, building sector. Sorry, is there, is there a question? Yeah, I don't see any images. All I see is the file. I don't see anything open. I don't know if anybody else is having the same problem. But. I, it's, just, it's just a projects list. You don't see the list? No, I don't see the list. We're only seeing something that says select communications number two. An REC project brainstorm 2021. They look like they're files that need to be open. Yeah. It's I get lost the screen share, maybe and just show them the folder. Yeah. You see yeah. two files, the folder. Yeah, I, I think it lost the screen, screen share and start it over. I don't know. We can try to screen share it real quick. And if not, if you've got a printout, it might just be working I'll through just the list. Start it again and see yeah. if it works. If it doesn't work. <clears throat> oh, okay. Maybe. Um, can you see it now? There you go. That's, That's better. better. Yep. Know what. All right, good. Yeah, thanks for telling us. Talking about. Um, okay, so this is the, uh, the a brainstormed projects list um, that we would love your feedback on. And we basically broke it up into two very broad. Um, uh, segments. And the first is reducing fossil fuel use in the building sector, or increase therm increasing thermal efficiency. Um, and underneath that, we have weatherization. And as I'm sure you know, um, the committee has done weatherization work with Capstone Bio Communities and other partners. And <laughs> Susan and Gary could speak to that in terms of the history of our weatherization work since I'm new. I'm new as of August. So, um, and we think that there is probably some ARPA funding for that. So, that's actually a question maybe for the select board in terms of whether or not there is ARPA funding. And then, just a little piece of data um, that I got from the Energy Action Network website the number of buildings in Randolph that are completely weatherized are 400. So I don't know how people want to do this. If you want to just look at it, um, I mean, I'm just sort of reading things. Um, the window addressers project, 
Um, that's a project, again, that is in, in progress. And Gary is probably the best person to talk about that. That's basically building window inserts. And then um, my understanding is putting those window inserts into municipal buildings. Is that right, Gary? Yeah, that's correct. That was actually a project started two to three years ago and was set back a year by um, COVID-19 and some reorganization within the Energy Committee. But Jeff Grout uh, and myself and a member of the of Lisa from the Rotary went down to Bedford a few weeks back and learned how to make these inserts. And um, we look at this as an opportunity to get all the public, the Rotary, the public citizens working together for a common uh, uh, good. And we expect to do that next fall. I just want to say the insert, Marion said that the inserts were going to be in the municipal buildings. They're, they are not. Um, they are for residential, especially low income residential places. Yeah. Okay, and the next, um, the next idea is to work on a community project potentially. And one idea is to partner with Norwich Solar. Um, apparently there are two and, and actually Brendan Malley is here from Norwich Solar and, and he could answer questions about um, two projects that are um, on the Davis Road, one, or I guess one is on the Davis Road, one is near the Davis Road, is that right? On 14. Yeah, one it's, is permitted and one is in the process of being permitted. Um, and they're interested in partner, partnering with potentially schools or maybe municipal buildings. But he can answer any questions that um, folks might have about that. Um, the other thought is to, to work on heat pumps and increasing the number of heat pumps installed in Randolph. Um, currently, again, according to the, to the data, um, there are 83. That might be something we can work on with Efficiency Vermont. So I don't know if we want to do questions like, uh, under this first section or what people want to do. Anybody can chime in. I have some questions. So some of my concerns here, Okay, it would be, you know, maybe this is where you can use the ARPA funds, but you know, we have a lot of municipal buildings right now that I think could benefit from weatherization and also changeovers from the fuels they're using. And I know, for example, you know, Chandler's going to need a new boiler or going to need some significant boiler work, and that's one of our biggest energy users. So those are the kind of things I'd love to see the work on is how do we get some of these municipal buildings into the carbon neutral zone here? Yeah, and one thing we could start with possibly is a, a list of the municipal buildings that would, could be considered. And think, Channel is one. Um, the town offices is another. I don't know how modern, but um, the heating and air conditioning or heating, the HVAC system is here, but um, that might be a starting point where we could actually um, list all the specific buildings and see if there are improvements to each building. Well, I think when you look at what the consumption is, things like Randolph Center Garage, the Village Garage, Chandler, okay, just to start off with those, Kimball's probably not that well insulated, I'm not sure, but if you start looking at the cost of what is, what's, we're spending on heat to take care of those buildings, and now that probably fuel costs are going to go up for us, um, I think that would be a really good place for this committee to spend some time on. Yeah, the, the R3 committee went through, uh, got a list of all the all the municipal buildings and they're pretty pitiful as far as their energy use uh, went. Um, never been any any real uh, weatherization or efforts to look at things like motors or lighting or any of those things. So there's a lot that can be done in municipal buildings. Just needs some somebody to pay attention. 
you know, well, and that's where the committee needs to be working on this because that's just somebody's got to take the lead on those properties. And, you know, certainly we can find out what the numbers are, but I think you'll look and see how much money we're spending on, on heat alone for those five or six facilities. You're going to be quite shocked when you see what the numbers are. Uh, John Lutz looked into that three or four years ago, and we have some data uh, on that, but we, uh, there's also data uh, on, on the energy dashboard that we can pull in, and we will gladly take that as a task. Yeah, I think one thing we could offer also is um, tracking that, not just inventorying it once, but, you know, regular reporting of the energy use at the key buildings, and that might be something our committee could help with. Well, the reason, I'm bringing up, the reason I'm bringing this up is because you're exactly right. We talked about it in R3. When I was on the budget committee, probably seven or eight years ago, we talked about it. And here we are still going nowhere, in my opinion. We need the baseline. Let's get on it. Well, there, that's, what, that's what this committee should be working on. Go. Somebody needs to be doing the analysis, figure out what it's going to cost. How do we change over? Can we make heat pumps work in those buildings? Or, you know, do we, they need to be, you know, pellet? type situation like Sam like um, Sam Hooper put in. I mean, those are the kind of things I think we need to be moving forward to here. And right now, if we're going to have to make an investment in some form of heating system to fix Chandler, I think now's the time to start looking at that. Yeah. Sounds good. And, and that's really one of the keys that we wanted to address at this meeting is what are the key, I don't know, two, three or four energy projects that, that uh, are the priorities for the town if you have any now and this that's an excellent example i mean that's something we can jump on and, and start tracking and i think that's the key is to track it i don't know if it's month to month or year to, i would think month to month energy bills would be the way to start and i don't know if anybody has that data now or if that's something we can i think John Lutz tried we've been to get paying heating bills in all these buildings for years i gotta believe we've got the numbers okay so i don't yeah. necessarily need tracking it's going to be the solution i think the solution is to figure out what we're going to do to change those things yeah but you got to know what you're using now in order to know how far we can reduce it too so i get yeah. that but we have the data we've been paying oil bills in all these buildings for years I think you know, having the data and, and that sort of thing, having the list is great, but we have always run up against um, you know, inertia at the town level as far as doing anything about energy in these buildings. So I, I think what we, what we really need is, is to have some kind of uh, effort to, to designate someone to be responsible for getting the energy uh, conservation measures put in somebody who's who's actually able to to take responsibility for that i mean it sounds to me like we need some sort of an overall energy audit you know just like what people do for their homes it seems like we need something like that town-wide for the, for the municipal buildings where then someone can come back to us and they can say here are all the places you can improve and this kind of improvement will cost you this much money and the, solu and the solution will save you this much of money. And so we can start to work our way down the list, starting with the lowest hanging fruit and the stuff which is gonna have the biggest bang for our buck. And then you know, kind of just tick them off as, as, as we have the funds to invest in these improvements. Well, Efficiency Vermont does that very job and we can easily bring them into the equation. That'd be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The town has to have the will to pursue them. And I'm hoping that, that this activity is going to help that. That is this meeting, and this discussion. Yeah, yeah no, I agree. And I, I would really like to see that happen. I would like, I'd like to see us, you know, have this sort of a list in front of us and then we can say to ourselves, well, you know, here we budget for the year, we can say how much money are we willing to budget for? you know energy improvements in the next year and then go down our list and say okay well we can afford this one this one and this one the next one will be next year you know some you know we, you know i don't know exactly what those will be but to engage in that kind of a process where we can prioritize so trevor do those arpa funds qualify for any of this kind of stuff i think there's the potential for maybe some of the programmatic elements that we've talked about um, such as the weatherization, and that's an idea that, that Trini had submitted separately too. Um, there might be some programmatic dollars 
infrastructure-based dollars, I think we'd have to dig into a little bit. It's one of the things that the ARPA subcommittee could identify. And that would be how one other subcommittee that's in play then ties into these larger efforts um, related to energy, because that's that's the group that's going to dig into what's allowed and how. But I, I do think, if I remember right, I saw that there might be some programmatic capabilities there um, to, to take advantage of. Well, if we can Sorry. leverage some of that stuff to get started, I think that would be beneficial. And we and we can pull usage data from those energy bills and those who, are just upstairs. Who would who would do that? Um, we have to coordinate access through the manager's office. It might be, given our current shorthanded status, it might have we might have to see who to do that. You, you, have pull, into that. you have to pull each individual bill and then compile them and based on what's mm -hmm. kept upstairs. And we can maybe reach out to the separate providers and see in a given year what the usage was and shortcut some of the, the grunt work. So you'll initiate that? If that's what comes out of tonight, we can we can initiate that, yeah. I would agree with Mark that the Energy Committee's done this several times before, and then whatever's recommended doesn't get carried forward. So it's very important that the town is committed, I think, to energy efficiency and meeting the standards that the state is setting. One of the conclusions I've come to is that I think we need a staff person, or we're going to need a staff person if we're going to, within the next five or 10 years, make anywhere as near the progress that we're supposed to be making to organize and help push that through. Are you thinking a sustainability coordinator model like some other communities have added, or a coordinator? I'm thinking Hartford added one, I think. Um, Somebody that I'm ranking on somebody else, yeah. Well, yeah, Harper, Harvard pushed these issues forward. Harvard hired uh, Jeff Martin three years ago, uh, and he has moved on and worked uh, for six towns, but he's housed in two two rivers out of Quichi. And um, so he is responsible for those six towns, and they pay his check. But uh, Two Rivers out of Quichi has just hired Steve, um, Steve Bauer, 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 Bauer mm -hmm. who, is, who, who we are, actually, Marianne, has been in contact with already. Yes, yeah, so I mean, right now, it's my understanding that Steve Bauer is our point person on energy projects through Two Rivers. Whether or not it's too late, if, if the um, town was interested in joining up with the other six towns who are using Jeff Martin, I have no idea. But that those six towns, as Gary said, are sharing this, this one person to do that, that kind of work. So that model is out there, too. Yeah, that's a good point that there could be a possibility of sharing an energy manager with other communities as well that could work with uh, not just Randolph, but then other communities could share the cost of that manager. There, there are 30 yeah. towns in Two Rivers, Ottaquichi, so the Steve Bauer will be shared by 30 towns. Well, that's too many. <laughs> Steve actually has a very different job description than Jeff Martin, so I think you'll, you'll find that they're they're uh, working in different realms uh, with, with, within T. Rourke. Well, I, I do like the idea of the potential of sharing somebody who you know works with this on a regular basis, knows how all this works, knows the right people to talk to, knows where funds tend to be. Um, it's not hard to imagine that somebody who we would only use on a part-time basis um, could more than pay for themselves um, in terms of the energy that they bring to us. I think it's certainly worth looking into. Well, we can follow up, and I'm one of the two coordinators with uh, Two Rivers out of Creechy, so that would be easy to talk to him about. Gary, are you familiar with any um, any municipal uh, energy audits that Efficiency Vermont has done? Because it seems like 
before we jump into having a, a shared or even our own municipal uh, sustainability coordinator, it seems like the easiest first step we could take to me is to actually either contract with energy uh, efficiency Vermont or some other entity to, to at least get an audit done. Um, uh, we've talked about about Trevor working with the staff to crunch the numbers of what our our uh, baseline energy uses has been in the various municipal buildings, but um, we can access that data in fairly short order. It just seems like we should jump to the next level is getting an ed energy audit done and, and, and much like we do with capital planning and much like we do for our roads, let's identify the, 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 the biggest problems and set a timeline and a plan in place for dealing with them. Um, well, three three years ago, Efficiency Vermont did that exact thing for our school system here in Randolph. And I've talked to Lane Millington about that, that whole approach. And I'd say we talk to Efficiency Vermont. Mm -hmm. I'm still concern, concerned about follow up. Um, and I, I, I would like to see if we can get the town or the town government to endorse the idea of, of pursuing these, uh, these energy efficiency measures once we, once we identify the, the right ones to, to do first. This is stuff that, that has been around for a long time. It's been it's been obvious in, in a number of uh, buildings that uh, huge amounts of, of dollars would be saved by, you know, doing the weatherization or changing the, the energy efficiency of the building. So uh, we, we need to get over this, this little, uh, little problem we have, which is that it's, you know, it's kind of not my problem uh, and get the town to endorse the, the very idea of, of doing energy efficiency in its own buildings. Well, there are people who are capable of making that calculation. We did it several years ago with a weatherization program and it was with homeowners and this organization. I can't remember what it says. And they had to come up you know, with their energy bills and their electrical bills and all those things. And then they said, we recommend you do this, this and this and it will cost this much and we can get you a low cost loan and you will save this much in the future. Mm -hmm. That skill is available. Yeah, I, I, I would second your thoughts, Mark, that uh, get, get it, getting a commitment from the town in the form of somebody actually responsible for, for following through with these actions rather than relying on um, the energy committee to try to navigate all of this on their own. Um, I, I, I think that's very important. Yeah, and I, I also agree with that. And, and I'm, I'm gonna um, ask Trevor to chime in here and sort of give us a better sense of, you know, if, if we really wanna make this something that our town is gonna move forward on, it does seem like it makes sense there to be, you know, you know, some sort of, you know, staff member that makes sure that it keeps going, you know, that having the, the, the volunteers of the energy committee where there's turnover, you know, it's, it, and we're talking about a multi-year project um, that can provide continuity and, and focus, you know, ha, what would be the best way for our municipal government to make sure that things don't get dropped along the way, that we do keep focused on this and make the, you know, the investments that we really ought to be making. I mean, there's two pieces to it. One is the, the actual project planning and identifying, define which projects in which order and what the cost is. And then committing as a community as a whole, this is where it doesn't just fall back on the town, but it also falls back on the voters as well. If there are resources needed to get these things done. The resources need to be there. From a staff perspective, it would be, um, it would be one of a number of areas of need where we could use a body to help us do either things we want to commit to or that we've already committed to. So the sustainability coordinator idea is one that would help us advance that. We could use somebody to help us with some of the ordinance enforcement stuff. We're still wrestling over 
Should it be a full-time or a part-time recreation person to help support those programs? So we're talking about staffing. I want to make sure we're moving that holistically as well as a conversation. So I think it's got to tie into some of those larger budget elements. It really comes down to getting these things done is about resources, both financial and, and, and the people. And if we have both of those, we can get it done, I think. I don't, I don't see that being the problem. The challenge would be if we don't have the, the financial resources to do it, or asked to do it with fewer people, that's going to be a really heavy lift. We're trying to lift a lot of other things right now, too. Well, one of the things about the energy coordinator position, if there were such a position, is that uh, that person could also be responsible for, you know, getting the funding to do these things, applying for the federal grants, applying for whatever is available to support um, this activity. It's not just making sure it gets gets done, but uh, making sure it gets funded. And then the yeah. back end of them, making sure there are the finance department resources to help us with the grant management, the reporting, the reimbursements, making sure we have the right structures. So it's showing up, not just adding capacity, but also showing up existing capacity so that we can successfully navigate whatever we do. I um, met with Stuart Blood, who's from Thetford last evening, one of the member towns that Jeff Martin from T Rock services. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's actually helping them with energy audits and developing procedures and budgets to allow them to selectively choose, you know, what has the best impact for their towns individually. So that kind of position brings a, a lot of uh, power and a lot of value to the process. Well, sitting next to me happens to be a person who does energy audits. Hi. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it. No, and I, I don't know if I, you know, I mean, I can certainly work with people to do that. Right. Um, at this point, and I'll be glad to, I do have some systems and programs that could could definitely aid with that that we use at work, but I, um, yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, yeah, that that's what I do, and that's what we do at work. So we can um, see where that goes. Keep in mind when you're thinking about the the cost to put this together or to support the whole concept that when we save energy in a building, it's significant amounts of dollars as well. So uh, this can definitely pay for itself over a fairly short time. And, you know, as a town, we have a long time to think about this. So we, we, we have a long um, amortization to deal with and we can, we can do some serious things to save money. One one other data point to consider is I just read an article last night when Jeff Martin was at Hartford and doing the uh, energy coordinator work there. He had actually already, within I think the first 10 months of his employment, um, implemented enough energy savings within the town to pay for his salary in year one. So... You know that kind of that kind of position can save real money for the town and put us on the path to a much more resilient future. Exactly, and and there's pay for performance type contracts where that person we might be able to find an entity that would do that do the energy audits and get paid by with a portion of what they save, which is a a fairly common way to do that without a, a large upfront cost for the town. But, you know, there's options for payment structures. But yeah, I mean, if we're not really paying attention to that and not really tracking it, um, the rule of thumb is probably 10 to 20% of your energy spend is, is going to be very low hanging fruit and very quickly um, rectified. So it, it's definitely cost effective. And it'd be very surprising if it wasn't. And typically for the town, I'd say, you know, it's the fuel for the buildings. And number two is prop, maybe number one, I don't know, is the vehicles, is the fleet cost for fuel. 
and we haven't even started talking about electrification of the vehicles yet. So, but I would think that the, the between the buildings and the in the fleet, that's a huge portion of the town of Randolph energy costs. Well, coming up for, with money to pay for, for staff is always a, a big hurdle. So if it's possible for us to have people start with the promise of getting paid with what they save us, uh, that sounds like something that would be hard to refuse. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> love, we really love to learn more about that. Okay. Yeah, maybe there's somebody from T-Road, Gary, that we can engage with directly to uh, flesh flesh that out. And and as as far as other towns with, with, within the area, um, you know, perhaps Bethel, Brookline, and uh, Brookfield, and, and and Braintree are also interested in, in in that kind of a resource being available to them, which would you know right. spread the cost. Well, that, would, that would be just Stephen Bauer. He's an energy planner with Two Rivers. Not in, I mean, how much time and energy is going to be devoted yeah. to implementation? I have no idea. He, say, he's he's got 30 towns to deal with, so yeah. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I think the idea of having a, co uh, a, a three or four town collaborative coordinator makes a lot of sense. I don't think Stephen's capable of doing that um, from his position at T-Rock. Yeah, it could be the Randolph Towns, uh, Braintree, and Brookfield, which is our common way of working. That that's consistent with the R three model too. So, if I'm understanding, we're talking about two different things, or two two things together. One is helping the town of Randolph save energy save money and also helping the people in the town. Amen. And yeah. they're attempt to do the same thing. That's where we get into the big, the large progress of the thing. So are there specific <laughs> actions that we can take and then report back to the select board at our next meeting to keep this alive. Um, is there somebody who can reach out to um, Three Rivers and find out about the possibility if what kind of support they can give, what kind of independent um, contractors are out there, how we might partner with other communities, um, what, what those different options look like and, and bring us some something that we can act on at our um, December meeting is that yeah, possible? Yeah, I, can, I can do that, and I'll have our next energy committee meeting, pulling that together, and then we'll get back to the town with where we go. If if we're going to give consideration to an energy coordinator uh, position, it seems like the next couple of months is the time to do it and to do it in collaboration with Braintree and Brookfield's select boards so that um, you know this can be something that can be discussed at town meeting um, because it is going to be a significant commitment if we do it collaboratively even on, on the part of each of the three towns. Um, I'm comfortable with moving that process along and, and I think we should try and expedite it. Well, as you know, the town meeting is March, so we got what four or five months here to yeah. Fill the but, budget, but my, my point is, time. we're in the budget. We're going into the budgeting cycle right now. So if money is going to be set aside, um, you know, we'll we'll be working on on budget and on capital budgeting over the next couple of months, and that'll be presented at town meeting. This is the time to give this some serious thought. Um, yeah, we have we have been advised to do that because of the bus budget by, by a, a member of the select board in, in Bethel, who is doing the very same thing now. Mm -hmm. So we can get him involved as well. 
In what capacity, Gary? Yeah, uh, he's a member of the select board. I, I know, but in what capacity does the member of the select board in Bethel play into the process here? Um, well, if there's there's a cooperation between three towns, why not cooperation between four? Right. Yep. Yep. Beth, Bethel is keenly sure. interested. At least the select board member is. I think that's a great idea. Should outreach to those towns be done by the Randolph Select Board or the Randolph Town Manager? How, how should that be handled? I couldn't imagine you would want the Energy Committee to do the outreach to the select boards of the other towns. Oh, I, I do, but I, and I can, but I, you know, I'd, I'd rather the, the town manager do it, but if he doesn't want to do it, I can do it. No, it's, about, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I, I think it makes sense, Gary, for a town representative to do that kind of an outreach. If, if, if we're going to possibly discuss sharing a resource, then that should be from a town official. Nice to have some meat on the bone before we approach them and with an idea though as well. Um, at, at the most basic level, I can make conceptual sort of introductions. Um, but at some point, there's going to have to be a level of detail if we're going to move into warn for town meeting. It's not the town meeting date to keep in mind. It's the end of January when that warning has to be set. Right. So really what we're talking about is less than two and a half months to have something on a ballot or incorporate into a budget at a time where some of our finance resources are, are a little bit under understaffed. So it's not just moving a ship, we're moving a fleet. <laughs> and so I just would ask to keep that in mind. That's something Josh can help with. I've uh, placed Jeff Martin's email address into the chat. Um, I'm sure if somebody wants to do some outreach to him, then um, he'd be willing to provide more information about what he does specifically for those six towns. Should we bring uh, him into a future meeting? Maybe we should meet with Kirar in a future meeting, in, including uh, uh, Jeff Martin and 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 I, uh, Bob. I have a pretty good relationship uh, through some of my other my freelance writing pursuits and and so on. Um, with Kevin Geiger, who's now the director of planning for T Roar. And um, I haven't met Stephen or Jeff, but I'm aware of their work to some degree. I'd be happy to at least reach out to, uh, to them and learn more about what Jeff is doing for the six towns and get their counsel on this idea of having a multi-town shared um, energy coordinator. Um, and, and, and see if they can cite any other models in the region that we might look to. But um, I, I do agree with Trevor, we need to hang a little bit more meat on the bones of this idea before we can really move it forward. And I think T-Roar could help us with that. So. Tom, I know I probably speak for everybody on, on this call that we would be grateful for, for that effort that, that you yeah. make there. I think that would be extremely yeah. helpful. I, I'm i talking to Kevin almost every week about, I've been writing a lot about housing issues, particularly in the Upper Valley, and Kevin's my go-to person on, on those issues. So um, I can start with a phone call to him, and and I'm, I will bet he'll hand me off to back to Bauer or Martin, but at least we can get their perspective from a regional planning standpoint about how we might collectively move forward. So I'll offer to I'll offer to do that, and I can report back to both the Energy Committee and the Select Board over the course of the next week or two, just what I find out. 
Well, that, that'd be great because I, you know, other communities have done this that we should be learning from their experience and not reinventing. So I, I do know that um, Stephen Bauer is working with um, at least one community in the Woodstock area, which would be Woodstock, um, which is revising its town plan over the course of the next six months or so. They're hoping to present a revised town plan uh, to the community in the early spring. And, and Stephen is working very closely with the Economic Development Committee uh, and Sustainable Woodstock on revising their energy plan, which hasn't been touched in years. Um, so there's an example of what he's doing. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that on for sure. Great. So Great. it sounds to me like we have um, a good start here for the process of looking at townwide efficiency, not townwide, but you know, within the, the town municipally owned properties uh, to get started and look at what we might do in terms of staffing and then having a process for prioritizing projects um, and, and figuring out what makes sense to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, we also heard from folks to, tonight that there's um, some some solar power um, potential opportunities that we should be exploring, and I'd, I'd love to hear more about those. Mm -hmm. uh, if I could just add, Larry, and to pick up on something that, that Pat um, uh, spoke to a little while ago, I know we don't want to get going in too many different directions at once, but we've spoken mostly about the municipal energy issues tonight and how we can address those inefficiencies. But let's not forget about what we can do for the general public too. And so I'm thinking, for example, I mean, I'm just brainstorming off the top of my head here, but if we get an energy coordinator in place, can we do an energy fair or some kind of public education program that that tells our people who live in the community, what is a heat pump? How do wood pellet furnaces work? What do they cost? What kind of rebates are available for them? I can tell you, because I'm looking into it, $7,000 right now from Efficiency Vermont. If you install a wood, uh, wood pellet. The Energy Committee you know. and the Energy Task Force has done several of those over the, over the years. Right, right. And, and, well, we, can, and we can do another one. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't I don't want to see uh, residential. I mean, right now we've we've got to focus on the incredible energy drain we have dealing with our municipal buildings, but longer term, big picture, let's let's you know let's keep a focus on on residential uh, energy improvements and energy usage too. Um, I don't want to see us bite off more than we can chew. We got to take things in you know reasonable steps, but. Well, we've had three programs on weatherization over, I don't know, six or seven years. And compared to other times, we've done extremely well. But it's a mm -hmm. drop in the bucket compared to the need, a drop in the bucket. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and all that stuff is really important. But what I, what I really like about working on municipal projects and making that a, a more immediate um, priority is just that we have a lot of control over that. You know, we mm -hmm. can say, we're going to do this, and we can educate folks out in the community. But um, it's it's hard to, you know, make folks you know, do stuff. Yeah, even absolutely, I, I hear you. I hear you. But that but that's a role that the energy committee and task force can do because we've yeah. done it before. We have these educational programs. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot easier to do that outreach, uh, Larry, when 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 the when when the town itself is is behind in implementing similar um, improvements in their buildings as well. So that, yeah, yeah, that, we can. That's, that's I, I, yeah, no, I agree, and we can you know you know publicize what we're doing at the town you know for our municipal buildings and and use them as an example of what you know you can do. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's terrific. You know, uh, hello everybody. My name's William here. Um, 
uh, I moved to town uh, about one year ago, so I don't quite know everybody yet. Um, and as a new homeowner, I'm kind of looking into getting some, you know, energy improvements on my house. And the biggest hurdle for me has not been information, but about who I can actually talk to to get quotes and actually get somebody here to tell me, here's how much money I can save. And so having a better list of those resources would actually have been much more valuable for me as, as somebody newer to town. Well, William, uh, call up Efficiency Vermont and they will provide the, the uh, uh, people to do the work who they have approved. They have an approved list mm -hmm. of- Exactly. Yeah, people. absolutely. I, I, I've looked through that list and kind of the problem I've been running into is everybody I've called uh, doesn't work in Randolph or is book solid. <laughs> so, you know, kind yeah, of a, yeah. to, to go back to some of the earlier conversation, you know, you're talking about the town leading the way. Um, for me, you know, if I saw the town got new heat pumps from so-and-so, that would be the first person I'd call. Um, mm -hmm. So I just kind of want to throw that out there. That, that might be a good way to help people in the community is just by, like you said, leading the way, putting up some resources. Here's who we use, see it in action. You know, that, yeah. that yeah. might be very good. It, it, we, Gary, I was, I was looking at that very list that you're referencing uh, yesterday uh, with respect to uh, wood pellet for boilers. And um, the two nearest contractors to Randolph are in Montpelier and Barry, and the next nearest one's in Bristol. Um, I didn't call them to find out what their um, workload is right like, now, uh, like right now, but if they're like any other plumber, electrical contractor, or builder in the state of Vermont right now, you know, they're inundated with work. Um, and they're short, and to make it worse, they're short staffed. So their building costs are going up, all their costs are going up. They don't have a number of employees to service their accounts and, um, and they're booked six months, eight months, 10 months out. So William, I hear your frustration, but. Um, You're not alone. <laughs> it's just the way it is right now. I mean, we use Mount Pelier Construction, and who are excellent, excellent, and they are also capable of making the calculation on how much you're going to save as as a result of doing the job. Another close one, very competent, is Building Energy, and they're out of White River Junction, mm -hmm. but I'm sure they're booked too. That's the problem. Yeah. So. Yeah. so you know, in, in any problem, there is also great opportunity. So it sounds as though there's an opportunity here for, for the Energy Committee and Randolph to try to work towards developing more local contractors um, that might be interested in, in doing this type of work. We weatherization and heat pump installation represents an enormous backlog of work for any one company that wants to take it on. Um, we, we just need to find a way to develop that backlog so it makes it more attractive for a contractor to seriously engage in this area. So if, if we can do the outreach to pull the people in that are willing to do weatherization on their homes, then you create that kind of a backlog and you create that, that uh, attractiveness for a contractor to get more deeply involved in rent. Oh, we know those contractors. Well, they don't exist right now. That's the problem. No, they do exist. It's just that they're booked with work, but we have worked with them in the past successfully. The problem is you have to get in the queue. Oh, we, we uh, need to create our own local queue. Yeah. I, I, well, good I, luck I think with we're that. getting. We can't hire anybody to do anything here. I'm telling you, it's been a struggle in my business. You know, I needed 35 people to do what I do, and I could only find 11, and five of those were high school kids that were yeah. 15 years old. So we have a major labor crunch right now, and that's what's going on with all the contracts. Yeah. I mean, well, Har we, Harmony we, Electric we, took no new customers. Tim took no new customers from March. I don't even know if he's taking new customers now, and he couldn't even serve his, you know, existing customers to the degree he wanted to. I had to do backflips to find somebody to install an EV charger in my garage. 
Uh, it, it's we, crazy right now. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to jump in here and and, and and say that I think we're getting a little off our topic. And yeah, we are. Just yeah. to bring us sort of back to focus, and um, I I think we've made some good progress, and, and I just um, it's six thirty now. We've been we've been here for an hour. I I think I would we have someone I I I'm pretty sure who was here to speak about solar power and some opportunities for the town and. I thought we might be able to give that person a chance to talk before we look at wrapping up our time together. Larry, I just have one other question. This reference to the six town project that Stephen Bauer is working on, who knows a little bit more about that? I don't want to call him cold and not know anything about it. What? what call Jeff Martin. What is he doing? Jeff Martin? Okay. Yeah, I believe it's Jeff Martin who, who, you, who you want to contact, Tom. Okay, yeah, so it's, Steve, it's not Steve. Bauer, Steve Bauer also works for T Rock, but he, he's yeah. the one who works with the 30 towns. Jeff Martin works with the six. Um, yeah. Jeff Martin works with the six towns. Okay, Steve Bauer works with the 30 towns. All right, got and it. He, yeah, so Je know. Jeff has a much more discreet portfolio, right. if you will. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, well, I'll get, I'll get on those calls right away. Yeah, Steve Bauer, though, is, is the contact person for Randolph in terms of energy issues, because I spoke yeah. with him a couple days ago. So if you can't reach Jeff, you can, you can reach Stephen. Yeah, yeah. And so the person that's here from Norwich Solar is Brendan Malley, um, and he can, he can explain the two projects that are... Um, in one is one has been permitted, permitted, and one is in the process of being permitted in Randolph. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, and uh, so, I just wanted to uh, say at the start that uh, the the balance of the discussion is great because solar alone is not the solution, and and we don't promote it as such. Um, but uh, but it is an important element of what can be done, um, very similar to the discussion of the, uh, uh, the town buildings. It, it represents an opportunity uh, uh, to make a specific decision where a town or uh, a school district uh, can make a single decision that makes an impact for a long period of time. So um, the, uh, the basic idea is that uh, community solar in the state of Vermont is designed so that um, as many people uh, as possible can participate in it. And so uh, the way it works is that, uh, that we create local solar arrays and, uh, and we partner um, with entities, towns, schools, businesses, individuals who uh, might not be in a position to make that long-term financial investment, but they can make a decision with the energy dollars they already spend. And the, and the majority of those energy dollars get funneled through our utility and out to kind of buy energy that gets imported uh, into our state. Our state produces the lowest amount of uh, lowest amount of in-state generation of any state in the country, um, and so uh, what we have here at Randolph right now um, are currently two Vermont 500 kilowatt community solar arrays. One is in permitting. Uh, we discussed that earlier this year. It's the Davis Road project, and the other has an issued permit, which is uh, at, on the Gifford Farm. And, um, and those projects are uh, seeking those community partners who, uh, who have uh, bills that they pay for the utility and uh, would like to uh, use that uh, and, uh, and connect with solar and make the uh, um, uh, local generation of renewable energy possible. So that's what we're, uh, that's what we're working on doing and uh, Randolph has right now one and hopefully two projects 
that will be available to partner with uh, local entities. And how does the money, or how does the, do they buy shares in the project? Is that how the, and then get credit for the solar generated of a certain portion of the array? So the way the way that these community solar projects work is uh, is that we we don't ask the town or the school to purchase the, a share in the array. You ask the town or the school to commit their energy bill to the array. So it's a called a it's a net metering credit uh, arrangement. So what happens is that if the the town or the school or other entity uh, agrees to be served with credits from the array, um, they get those credits at a discount. So there are some uh, energy savings mm -hmm. that are uh, not enormous, but make a big difference over time um, with no upfront investment. And, uh, and so making that commitment uh, takes what you would spend on your monthly electric bill, uh, like I said, which typically just gets shipped out of, out of state for imported power mm -hmm. and uses that those resources um, to um, allow the uh, the building of local renewables. Um, and the local renewables um, help us meet our in-state uh, renewable goals. It's uh, it is complicated. It's important to mention that it's that it can be complicated because the the renewable energy credits typically go from the project to the utility, Green Mountain Power, because the utility as a regulated entity has what they call tier two requirements. So they have to meet these requirements for in-state generation. So the RECs, the renewable energy credits, stay in the state and they get retired here. Um, so uh, it's really a partnership model of as opposed to asking any one entity to do everything, which is find a place to build it, pay the money to build it, and have all the benefits, the partnership model allows the uh, each entity to do what they can. And the, the thing that the town can do or schools can do uh, with, with no upfront cost is to sign up to uh, be what we call the customer or the off taker, receive those credits, and, uh, and that allows, that uh, helps us meet our in-state goals for renewable generation. I have two questions. One is, would the electric bill, would it somehow reduce the entity's electric bill? So it doesn't, overall? it doesn't reduce the, uh, it it's, uh, doesn't reduce the bill, but the credits are at a discount. So um, in a, the simplest, fashion, the solar array produces $100 worth of credits, mm -hmm. and, and the, uh, the partner um, customer would pay, uh, say, $93 for the $100 worth of credits that they get. Mm -hmm. So it, it does provide energy savings up front. And second question is, um, since these are in Randolph, would these count on our scorecard for solar generation in the town of Randolph? For the amount of solar generation? They do. So when towns have uh, goals for the amount of uh, uh, renewable energy that they uh, are able to put together in their town, mm -hmm. these community solar arrays count for that. Mm. Great. So, so I want to make sure I understand a little bit better how this works. So, so basically a, a private investor or a set of investors are constructing the solar array and the town committing essentially to be buying its power um, from the net meter credit that this array generates. That's right. Uh, you know, the, the community solar model means that you're, you're buying, um, you're paying for the credits. So um, not the power itself, right? That's the, the value of this net metering program is that um, you might not be able to put your solar on, you know, on your parking lot or on your school or in the middle of the town. So the array is located and you know, we do all that work to find a good place for it. Um, and it produces that 
energy uh, and the credits show up on the bill of the town or school and uh, and the town or school makes that commitment to buy those credits at a discount. This is this is a different approach than the uh, than the community solar program we did here five six years ago. Susan and I uh, bought I bought four shares and I don't know what it cost. Uh, and Susan did something similar, and that, but that's a, a that's a private one. What, right. And you had to pay for it. And I had to pay for it. Right. In this case, um, just as an example, just as an example, um, if you had a uh, uh, a town building that had a thousand dollars a month of an electric bill, and that town building uh, signed a, a, a solar net metering credit agreement with a, a, an array here in town. The goal would be to have approximately a thousand dollars a month of uh, uh, net metering credits show up on the bill, and uh, and they would offset the monies owed to uh, GMP, and in turn uh, you would uh, owe the array owner um, those for those credits at a discount. So say you know nine hundred and thirty dollars instead of a thousand dollars. How would we be ensuring that GMP isn't purchasing fossil fuel generator power with those RECs? So the way the uh, RECs are treated is that the uh, the array uh, by its CPG, its Certificate of Public Good uh, from the state of Vermont, and its um, uh, GIA, its uh, generator interconnection agreement with GMP. Um, those RECs uh, are produced by the array. They are they go to GMP and GMP uses them to meet their tier two in-state uh, uh, requirement for renewable energy generation. So Pat, Pat's been trying to jump in for a little while here. I, mm -hmm. I just wanted to cut in on his behalf. Sure. Sorry. Hi, okay. Brandon. Um, Am I correct in thinking that Norwich Solar is working with RACDC? Yeah, so RACDC has signed uh, a, a solar net metering credit agreement um, for some of its building uh, with Norwich Technologies and is served by uh, solar here in Vermont. So there would be a customer that we could talk with. They're a customer you can talk with. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, um, and we have. Uh, I know separately we've come to the town, I believe um, the LED dynamics building has solar on the roof, but they don't own that solar. But, uh, so they have a net metering credit agreement. Uh, so they get the credits produced by the solar at a discount. And that's one way to, uh, to have, have that solar uh, renewable energy generation be here without asking LED Dynamics to um, use some of their valuable resources to pay for it. Well, this, this is interesting. And I think there's, it's possible that this would make sense for the town. Um, we, um, I think we heard, we've heard enough tonight to, at least in my mind, um, want to have you back at a select board meeting where we can put this under, uh, you know, our agenda as a, you know, item that we're going to discuss and so that other folks can know that we're can, we might be considering something like this. Would you be willing to come back at another select board meeting next month, maybe, or in January? Of course. Thank you for happy to do it. And we can just, uh, as, as Pat mentioned, um, this is a not a new thing. So uh, talking to towns that have net metering credit agreements uh, or talking to um, nonprofits that have them is is super easy. There are, there are lots of folks that can refer you to um, uh, who have experience with it and had it for years and can describe the experience. And I think your website explains this also. I, it sound what you said tonight sounds very familiar to me, and I think I got the information from your website. We try, we okay. try, but sometimes you know uh, it's easier I need to do it in writing because like right. I said. It, Pretty complicated, but um, that would be a good idea, I think, to talk to um, entities that are doing it now, but also spend a little time on their website. And it says, at least for me, it's easier to see the figures right in front of me and how that works. So, and so I, you know, I'm aware of everybody's time. I just wanted to say, 
the, the main points are that um, solar arrays um, that are permitted or in permitting in physically located in your town are often hard to come by. So this is a uh, this is a is a, a special opportunity. And our our really the goals that we all share here are the big picture, which is we would like to move to a, a, a version of Vermont where more of the power that we use is generated in Vermont and is renewable. So those are broad goals, right? Um, uh, you could say emission. And that's Green Mountain Power's uh, goal as well. That are in partnership. Okay, so it sounds like we have um, some clear action items that we can move forward on as a result of our time together. I really appreciate everybody coming together so that we can do this. Um, is there anything else that folks are itching to get off their chest before we adjourn? Yeah, I just have a quick question. Um, I, I missed the first part of this meeting and I haven't been to others in the past. Um, but uh, given the passage of the Reef and Infrastructure Bill, I know there's a lot of funding in there for uh, electric vehicle chargers. Um, and I'm kind of curious if the, the town uh, energy committee here has thought about uh, trying to take advantage of that as soon as possible, just as a way to kind of lay infrastructure for the future. Um, I know we'll, we'll want it in the future for when the fleet gets changed over, but you know, yeah. has that been discussed? We did that three years ago when the first offering came out uh, and we spoke with the hospital, we so, spoke with the, um, the Gifford the hospital and, and Pat Moulton at the college and they applied for it. We couldn't get the town of Randolph to apply for it. And the other two uh, could have were turned down, but if the town of Randolph had applied for it, they would have got it. I'll offer here, this is not solar related, but Norwich Technologies has uh, uh, participates in the EV marketplace. And we have a grant currently um, uh, to install DC fast chargers in six Vermont towns. And we're uh, exactly for that purpose, which is, um, you know, if the chargers aren't there, uh, you know, folks uh, won't come to the town with their EV uh, cars and uh, folks in the towns um, don't have the resources they need to buy EV cars. But if they are in the town, they bring people to the town. They do bring, awesome. so this yeah, is it's, it's right at the beginning. I, sh I should say this is the first, um, a version of this grant. It was a grant um, that uh, we worked with the state on and, um, and it pays for the installation of what are called DC fast chargers. Is that level three? Level three chargers. Oh, wow. So they're expensive, right? Mm -hmm. This is uh, um, somewhere between uh, 50 and $150,000 mm -hmm. uh, for an installation. So, it, uh, but it's a significant resource that lets people, visitors, come to the town and charge their cars um, quickly. Like, so you can get about 75% of a charge in less than an hour. Are, are you gonna find this is something that Randolph could take advantage of soon? I'm not sure. So I, I have, I, I've had other questions like this from other towns. So these six towns are the first ones, but it is uh, a promising avenue. And I, I hope there's more opportunity. And if I hear of it, I will certainly uh, bring it to my own town. Sun Common does the same thing as well, and they're just a little short drive north of us. So I'm yeah, I'm just really curious about the infrastructure bill because I know there's like 30 billion or something for DC fast chargers. So yeah, and the trick is always obviously what path that money has to take to end up in your town. Mm -hmm. So you know this grant is from money from uh, you know a year ago. And so what we don't know yet is the path that money will take uh, between the federal legislation and Reno. So I'm just curious here, Larry, didn't we have this conversation about locating electric chargers in the village? We already applied for that grant opportunity, I thought. No, it never happened. John Copan tried to make it happen, but it didn't happen. There is a level two charger being installed by um, 
the coffee shop. Yeah, I, I thought we'd already been moving down this path before. We got what was available to us at the time. No, we didn't. Uh, but Jerry Ward facilitated the one by the coffee shop. Okay. Right, Jerry? I know that we had these conversations at a select board meeting because we talked about the matching grant money. So I, don't know. I know it never happened. Never happened. And okay. it doesn't exist, so it didn't happen. All right. Well, that's where I thought. I, I know we have some of the park and ride up in the center, and so I'm not sure what where that went, but well, that, well, that's they, they. Well, are you talking about the one here, Randolph, or the one down in Exit? Well, Street? I know we talked about different locations around the town to locate these, and one of them was by the municipal offices, and we talked about. Oh yeah, yeah. So what happened there? Why that? I'm not sure why. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the answer offline. All right, you the give me the The ball was dropped. Okay. The ball got dropped in the application process. All right. Okay. Any? Well, let's not drop that ball again. <laughs> Any other questions or comments before we go? A quick comment. I think this has been a great meeting. I'm really hopeful after listening to uh, what everyone has had to say. I, I I agree with you totally, John. I think I think it's a new day here. Can we um, review action items, or is somebody writing down the actual action items from the meeting, <laughs> so we know who's going to talk to who for energy auditing? Doesn't that go in your notes? Yeah. You? There could we maybe do just a real quick review of Gary. You're going to talk to Two Rivers about. Was it two rivers that did the free energy audit for the municipal towns? Um, efficiency Vermont. Efficiency Vermont. I'm going to talk to yeah. Efficiency Vermont okay. and and and, and John. Tom reach out to two rivers. Tom, Tom, two rivers. Okay. Tom I think rivers. those are the only two. Somebody's got to pull the baseline data okay. for energy usage. That'll probably be town staff. Town staff's going to reach out on some of the coordinator models, both from a single town to a shared. Maybe make some initial outreach to the extent we can with the information we've got. I think we need to dig into some of the weatherization um, type of models where we get to the part where we benefit the residents in mm -hmm. addition to the town. There's a larger need for planning for these projects once they're identified, both the money and the timing. And then there was some talk about a resource listing and contacts, even if it's just connecting with efficiency of Vermont, making them more easily available to new residents like William or anybody else who's interested. Those were the five things that I wrote as takeaways from this at a minimum. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And we're going to hear more about community solar at a future meeting. Yeah. So I think that sounds great. Okay. I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. It was a fruitful discussion. And uh, have a wonderful Thanksgiving next week, all of you all.